Yeah, I would start just on a sort of basic premise, though. That not sure. all, not not you know, not all knowledge is good or mm -hmm. evil. It's how it's used. Just as you have the mm -hmm. knowledge of good and evil, um, and you have to be wise enough to be able to handle that knowledge. And as humans, we're not always equipped well enough to do that. And that's part of our, our process that we're, that's going on with us until we're resurrected. So we need to keep that in mind. We need to keep in mind that entertainment has a long history. And it goes back into prehistory, just as our history does. Mm -hmm. And that entertainment, for the most part, in terms of the stuff that has survived, there's probably always two different levels. There's the one that's written by those in power, which I would say would be mostly the royales and the nobility class, the elite class um, that come from the giants. Um, so people may want to go back to the last show and look a little bit more what I was talking about on that. Um, and so they, they've, they're the ones who educated only the elite. And so entertainment, as it comes down through history, is the history as they see it, and it's told through a polytheist lens. They have gods in all of the cultures, right? So it's not a monotheist history. It's not that it's all wrong. It just has a slant to it. But it's that, that entertainment aspect as it connects into what we see today is, is we should not look at all entertainment as being evil. We shouldn't look at concerts as being just evil. I would say there's a couple things that we need to understand is that if there, if there is a idol on the stage of a God or representing yeah, a God, yeah, you know, that might be a clue that you ought not to be participating because it might be a ritual and every, all the songs and everything that goes along. So we don't want to be participating in rituals. It's like yoga. It's a stretching exercise. But in terms of the music, in terms of the setting, in terms of what's being discussed, that is part of polytheism to become in touch with the divine essence. Don't get involved in that. Just make sure that you're separating i mean stretching is not a bad thing meditating is not a bad thing it's just what you're doing with that 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 makes sense so we have a long history of entertainment being told by polytheists so we have to understand that the things that they talk about are is their history their genealogies their belief system so we have to understand the language that they talk in and one of the things that you learn by reading my book is a lot of that language hmm. so that you can pick up, hey, that's telling me something so that I need to be aware of. So when I watch and I love science fiction, I love entertainment, I'm but I'm not just turning it off because, uh, you know, there's an all seeing eye or something. I'm recognizing the symbol for what it is and saying, mm -hmm. OK, what's the message they're trying to communicate <laughs> so I have a better understanding what they're really trying, trying to say. Mm -hmm. And that I also understand it can be used as preparation for people for down the road to accept things because it's a little bit more normal. It's in, in one, so I, I, I understand that that's going on. But what we have to do is, is understand what's going on and be very good with critical analysis and objective while we're looking at that and if you're watching fairy tales you ought to be telling and you're watching it with your children you ought to be telling them that these might be a memory of creatures that were created by fallen angels that weren't permitted by god right yeah. um and it just might be something that you want to be aware of and i don't want to people have people to stop watching some some really good entertainment so they write really good stories they're called fairy tales all of their literature that we understand is a fairy tale, just as they call the Bible a fairy tale. And in that, it has a happy ever, what is it called? Uh, happy, happy ever after ending. <laughs> uh, and so they look at the Bible as being the same sort of thing. And Tolkien and Lewis called that a uh, catastrophe. So that it's not the real end. It's just so that the reader won't be too upset about 
the hero. He actually dies as opposed to he doesn't have a happy ever after ending. And they look at the crucifixion as polytheist as that story, because they look at Jesus as a mortal prophet, but he survived the cross and he wasn't resurrected. So they say that's the fairy tale. And you to understand that you have to be an adept from an interpretive perspective to understand the allegories, understand the true meaning of the story. That's how they write their literature. So it has that interesting, compelling narrative like Tolkien and Lewis were terrific writers right and mm -hmm. but they're not talking about christian history <laughs> it's anything but um so we have to be we have to be aware of that so if you look at what happens down through history you have like all of the greek mythology that's written in a literature form it's about the gods it's about the giants it's about the bloodlines ovides in rome same thing roll that down so i won't go through the whole history of literature you have very famous writers that are propped up like shakespeare who is associated with with bacon who has his own separate sort of mythos as well and he is creating a series of plays that is all documenting their bloodline history, documenting their belief system. Characters of that will be very much representative. And they even have things like in Midsummer's Night Dream, the fairies and the king of the fairies. They embed that history in. And it's a great, again, great story. But unless you are a polytheist adept, you don't get the full sort of meanings in there. And so Bacon created two literary societies, the Knights of the Helmet and the Spear Shaker Society. The Spear Shaker was Apollo and Athena who had the spear that they shook. And I won't go into the whole um, metaphor of, but they're two Greek gods who sponsored the arts. And he names this society the Spear Shaker Society, who William Shakespeare is part of. But... The bigger part of the story is, is that he's bringing in writers to create the new English language for their uh, new world order, this Babel language that he imagines that through England, they're going to start this march towards the end time. And then they need this new universal language. So he creates this new language that then becomes the language that's used in the King James Version Bible um, and starts to go around the world through the English Commonwealth. And uh, so that's one of those literary societies where there's a whole bunch of knowledge being imparted that people like William Shakespeare, who never went to Oxford, would know nothing about. But he's writing about information mm -hmm. on things he should know nothing about.